What's going on my fellow rock and rollers? Don't forget to hit the bell notification icon to be notified every time I upload a new video on my channel. One of the biggest political scandals in Canadian history involved the band The Rolling Stones, and it happened over four decades ago. Now granted, as Canadians, we've had some huge political scandals that have shaken the country to its core. If you've read the paper or seen Canadian news recently, our current Prime Minister seems to be involved in scandal after scandal. But perhaps my favorite scandal was the one he had a few years ago called Elbowgate, where Prime Minister elbowed a member of Parliament, as you can see here, and went on to apologize not once, not twice, not three times, but four times in the same day, and our news cycle spent days and days on it. So you may be wondering, why am I bringing this up? Well, the current Prime Minister's father, Pierre Trudeau, was also the Prime Minister of Canada in the 70s and 80s, and he had a big scandal involving his wife and the Rolling Stones. What was the scandal? Stay tuned to find out. Back in 1977, the Rolling Stones had a pretty ambitious idea. They wanted to fly unannounced into Toronto, Canada, play two secret gigs to a room full of Rolling Stones fans, record the performances, and then fly out without many people finding out. And the Stones would settle on the El Macambo nightclub to do the gigs. The club's booker would pencil in the venue's calendar on March 4th and 5th, 1977, a band called April Wine to buy them some cover. The band that was set to open for April Wine would be a group called the Cockroaches, which was the alias the Rolling Stones were using. Now on the day of the first show, the band would rehearse upstairs and soundcheck, and anybody who walked by the club during that time probably thought they heard a Rolling Stones cover band. Who would have really thought the Stones would have showed up to Toronto unannounced anyways? There was then the last part of the puzzle, which was the most difficult part, getting fans to the gigs without knowing they were seeing the Stones. The band's management would team up with a local radio station called Chum FM, which held a contest asking listeners what they would do to see the Rolling Stones. Duff Roman, who is the person behind Chum FM, would recall to the National Post, the plan that we constructed was to have a contest. What would you do to see the Rolling Stones play live? This way we could select the 300 top entries and guarantee that real fans would be there for the event. The prize would be a chance to see April Wine at the El Macambo nightclub. People rode in and we cherry picked the best ones. As you might expect, there were a lot of nude Polaroids. When the band came in to judge the winners, they slipped the photos into their pockets and took them home, he'd say. The Stones were in Toronto for a week during the two secret shows and they stayed at the Harbour Castle Hilton Hotel. It was also during the stay that guitarist Keith Richards was busted for drug possession a few days prior to their shows. And it wasn't exactly the type of news coverage they were hoping for, but it wouldn't be the end of the bad press coverage as we'll get to in a little bit. Now the radio station chartered a dozen or so buses and told the winners of the contest to meet them at the radio station where they would then be driven to the venue. Roman would remember, I got onto the mic of one of the buses and said, I have some bad news. There's a change to the show tonight people were disappointed and started to boo. I continued, along with April Wine, you'll also be seeing a band called the Rolling, yes, the Rolling Stones. And for a moment, people sat in utter bewilderment. Then there was a lot of cheering and shouting when they realized where they'd be going. Now keep in mind, Margaret Trudeau and her husband, Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau, had a 30 year age gap between them, and she was never a big fan of the political life. The night the Stones played their first concert, it was coincidentally the pair's sixth year wedding anniversary. And rather than spending time together, the pair were apart. Margaret was spotted both nights at the Stone shows at the El Macambo nightclub and would be staying at the same hotel as the band, albeit 10 floors apart. She would arrive both nights in the company of singer Mick Jagger and guitarist Ronnie Wood. And the public would soon learn that Margaret's relationship with her husband was in shambles and unbeknownst to the public at the time was that they were already separated. Later that night, according to McLean's magazine, she went to the Stones party back at their hotel and one guest would tell the magazine she really pooped the party. Nobody could relax. And she was also accompanied by security as well. And when the Prime Minister's office was asked to comment on her appearance, a Trudeau spokesman simply said it's her private life and she's on record as saying she wants to lead it the way she wants to. It was alleged by the media and by those in attendance those two nights that Margaret had in fact had a relationship with Stones guitarist Ronnie Wood. In fact, in Wood's biography, he would reveal a 1977 encounter with, as he put it, a lovely dark-haired woman at a Toronto hotel. He would go on to say, from the moment I met her, we spent as much time together as possible. No one in the band judged me for what I was doing, but they recommended I be cautious. We both knew it was something that couldn't have a future, but we shared something special for a short time. 
and he would also describe the woman as the world's youngest first lady, which was probably a dead giveaway that it was Margaret Trudeau. However, in Margaret's book, she would deny any sort of relationship with any members of the Rolling Stones. And following the Stones gigs in Toronto, she would hop onto a flight and head to New York with some friends to partake in some photography as she would claim. While in New York, she was greeted by a barrage of reporters as she attended a ballet performance and was asked about her marriage, which she declined to comment on. At one point, she was handed a copy of the New York Post by one of the reporters, which showed a photo of the Trudeaus with the headline, Trudeau's Wife in Hiding. She would throw the paper into the front row of seats, saying, I say F to all those papers. My husband knew, my secretary knew, I behave as myself always. Later that night, Trudeau and one of her friends went to the Plaza Hotel, where they were joined by Stones guitarist Ron Wood. The bad press didn't end there, as the New York Daily News wrote in a column, Ron Wood is Mrs. Trudeau's very special stone, and you can roll with that one. He can probably tell you more about where Margaret is staying than maybe even the Prime Minister it would read. Many in Trudeau's political party, the Liberals, viewed Margaret as a liability to her husband's political career. One would state, the nation's at stake here. You can't have the PM's wife hanging out with the Stones for Christ's sake when you're at 41% in the polls. Another would state, it sure doesn't hurt Jagger. The only one who gets hurt is Trudeau. The quality of the Trudeau's marriage is a matter of endless speculation and much concerned pessimism, the article would state. Not all the members of the Stones were enthused about the publicity, as drummer Charlie Watts would tell the press, I wouldn't want my wife associating with us. That does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to the like button and subscribe. And as always, if you have suggestions for future topics, let me know in the comment section below. Take care.